Hello again everyone, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take the OP1 field and we're going to connect it to Logic Pro X. So we're going to cover three topics. Number one, how to use the OP1 as a class compliant MIDI device. Number two, how to transfer audio files onto the OP1. And then number three, how to use Logic's external instrument in conjunction with the OP1. All right. Let's get started. Before we go on any further, I would encourage you to download the OP1 Field Kit. You can find it on the Apple App Store. Uh, this is required for transferring files onto the OP1. Again, the Field Kit by Teenage Engineering. Download that if you haven't already. Topic number one, how to use the OP1 Field as a MIDI controller. Well, it's actually quite simple. Here we have the OP1 connected to the Mac via a USB-C. Uh, slash Thunderbolt connection. Assuming that all of your MIDI parameters, that being the port, channel, etc., etc., are all synchronized with the OP1, you should be able to use uh, the OP1 as soon as it's connected. So I'll switch to the synth engine. And the only reason I switch to the synth engine is not necessarily for uh, the purposes of audio, but it's to switch my octave. All right. So let's see here. I'm using Analog Lab 5. Uh, let's look for something. Uh, maybe like an electric piano. Okay, so you get the point. OP1 field is now being used as our primary MIDI controller. Okay, so now we have the OP1 set up to control our MIDI. Let's record something. Topic number two, how to transfer files onto the OP1 for future playback. What we want to do is we want to hold shift, go to com, and press button number four for MTP. Once the connection is established, what winds up happening is the OP1 registers as a mass storage device. I'm interested in the synth folder and the subsequent snapshot folder. We'll tuck this away for right now, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that here in a few moments. So now we're going to gather some audio. Um, we're going to create an audio file from this MIDI region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this MIDI region into audio via bounce in place. I'm going to highlight my MIDI region and let's see, I'm going to go over to file, go to bounce, bounce track, uh, we'll bounce the region in place. All right, let's give it a name, uh, sample demo, create a new track. Leave the source in place. All right, here we go. Click OK. All right, and there we go. All right, so I don't necessarily need the MIDI anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this track. And I am going to hide it. There we are. This is pretty much prepped for transference, but let's zoom in on this a bit. What I also like to do is normalize my audio regions just to make them nice and loud. So I'm going to click function and I'm going to normalize region gain. We're going to keep it just under zero dB. There we go. So the reason I normalize my regions is to make them nice and loud. As long as they're not clipping, we should be good. If they are too loud in the mix, I can always turn them down. So, you know, no harm. All right. So now we are ready to bounce this region off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to file again, and I'm going to go to bounce and I'm going to bounce the project or the selection. Make sure your file format is set to AIFF. 24 bits should be fine. The sample rate's excellent. This is good. 
uh, and, and again, the reason you want to use AIFF is because this is the compatible file type for the OP1. All right, let's bounce this over to the desktop. And I'll just simply call it triple Z sample demo three. All right. Okay, from there, all we have to do is drag and drop sample demo three over into our snapshot folder. Now let's go back over to the OP1. So on the OP1, all I have to do is just tap exit, go back to my synth engine, hold shift, press one. And let's go down to our snapshots. Okay, let's look for our sample demo. And there it is. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that because the OP1 can transfer audio over USB, what we can do is we can make the OP1 an input device for audio. Here's how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this track, hide it, create yet a new audio track, go to my logic settings, go to audio, and I'm going to make sure that the OP1 is set as my input device. I can use my audio interface as my output. I'm going to turn on input monitoring as well as record enabler. All right, let's go back over to the OP1. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to press one. Oh, let's see. There we are. Sorry. To access my preset here. So let's see, now we're looking at our sample demo. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm going to increase the amplitude of my sample. There we are. Let's trim this a bit. Let's see here. Turn that down to here. And then I'll turn my fade on. And I'll trim, let's see, I'll hold shift and, no, nope, hold on. And then I'll just trim that back. There we go. That's what I want. The cool thing about the OP1 is that it transposes its samples. If I wanted to, I could take the transposed rendition of the sample and record it right back into Logic. Let's see. All right, let's do that. Oh, one thing. I am going to turn off the metronome for now. Okay, the third topic that I wanted to cover was using one of Logic's external instrument tracks to trigger the sound engine of the OP1. So here's how we accomplish that. I'm going to take this audio file and I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to mute the audio region, not the audio track, but the audio region. I'm just going to move that over. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a brand new track, a new external MIDI track. Here we go. All right. What I'm going to do is I am going to create a MIDI region. And I'm going to dial in a couple of chords here. Let's go for a G major seven, shall we? All right. So where are we? OK. G. B. D and F sharp. 
Okay, perfect, good. All right, so what am I doing? What's the purpose of this? External MIDI tracks send information via their MIDI output to some instrument outside of the Logic environment. In this particular instance, we're going, we're going for the physical OP1 field. So again, the information, the MIDI information is going to get transferred into the OP1 field. The OP1 field is going to respond to this by playing audio, and we're going to take that audio and feed it back into Logic. All right, so let's go back to our audio track. Let's turn on the input monitoring and let's see here. Excellent. Now let's go back over to our external MIDI instrument. Let's set the output port to OP1. So now whenever I play the MIDI back, what's going to wind up happening is the information is going to get transferred to the OP1 and we should be able to hear the OP1's input through the audio track. Beyond all of that, we have the capability of recording the input as well. In this instance, all I have to do is just tap record. Here we go. And there we have it. Same difference. If I wanted to, I could go back in and normalize the gain here. There we are. On top of that, now we can apply audio effects, audio utilities, what have you. I'll just use the multi effect as an example. Let's see here. At this point, you can pretty much do whatever it is you want to do with it. If you wanted to take the newly manipulated audio region and save it as another audio file and transfer it into the OP1, you're, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. It's, at this point, it's kind of a whatever thing. And that's it. There you have it. Okay, guys, and there you have it. For any of my teenage engineering enthusiasts, logic enthusiasts, hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any more questions about the process, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to respond to them. Until then, I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you.